Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Soulful Eclectic. I am your host, none other than the now Dr. Diana Collins. Yay. Yes, I have officially been indoctrinated into the doctor of nursing practice. So it is now Dr. Collins. So there you are. So yes. So welcome to today's episode of the Soulful Eclectic. And I want to thank everyone who has been on this journey with me as I continue to grow in my field and to continue to make myself the be- the expert that I am so that I can bring you the best information as we continue to care for ourselves and each other in this community. So what better way to do that than to continue to educate myself and be my best self, right? So um, let me just start off by saying, if this is the first time you're joining me, welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time out to be here on the show. Listen, wherever you're listening to and while you're driving, while you're washing dishes, while you're doing laundry, whatever. If you're at home and you got it playing on the TV, WUBI, Ubiquity TV and radio, guys, come on. Um, so if you're listening to us on TV, you could have me playing in the background. However you are listening, I want to say thank you for taking the time out. And if you are returning, hey, what's up? <laughs> thank you for coming back. I appreciate you taking the time out to come back and listen and join in in the conversation. And believe me, we have had some great conversation. And if you've been listening for the past few weeks, I, you know what, I have to say, it's been a busy few weeks, life has been life in. So yes, you've been hearing some stories repeated. And I thank you guys for chiming in. And if you missed the segment, you came back and you caught in and you know what, that's what it's all about. So I thank you so much for that. Um, I want to thank our sponsors, Divine Nubian Essentials. So I know you guys have like, been using Divine Nubian Essentials, and I so appreciate you all for doing so. But if you have not, uh, I'm just going to say, what are you waiting for? I've been using the scalp treatment, Odyssey scalp treatment, and the uh, hair scalp oil for ever, uh, ever since I started my locks, and they are officially five years old today. So why not join the bandwagon, okay? And this beautiful, lovely lady is actually my daughter, but look at that hair. Oh my gosh. It's amazing. And also if you have not joined us, um, there is Collins Education Resource Management as well. Uh, So we are here to help all of our students do better and be better as they are navigating the lovely world of education. And as I said, we are now part of WUBI Ubiquity Radio and TV. So thank you so much for uh, being a part of our family. And we hope you continue to share our journey as we are sharing your journey. When you guys call in, listen to the radio, we have a lovely array of shows that are, are here for you. So please check us out on the radio or on WBI TV, which is on Roku only for now. So with that, I want to start with us talking about ourselves and being our authentic selves. And with that, I have this lovely young lady that I met out and about in the community. And her name is Nancy Hales. And she goes by blue. So we are going to find out. I caught you off guard. Oh my gosh. I know. (laughs) When I tell you guys that we are an authentic show, we are an authentic (laughs) show. You don't know what you're going to get. You don't know when I'm going to pop you back into the studio because guess what? There's no way for me to warn you to tell you I'm coming to get you. (laughs) Hello. Hello, everyone. (laughs) Everyone, please. Meet Nancy. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is hilarious. I tell you, if if there's anything in this show, it's just like the the wackiness that can happen. Um, that's what we're all about. But Nancy, thank you so much for being a guest on my show. I, I so appreciate you for that. Um, Nancy has this new podcast out consider this Lily. And I, you know, I was one of her guests on her podcast and she was so lovely to grace us with coming on 
this podcast with me. But before she even started her podcast, I mean, we met, um, and I love your energy. I really, really do. Uh, because we met at a poetry night, right? Just a random night, just hanging out, kind of who knows what what we're doing, but we're out doing whatever, just trying mm -hmm. to entertain ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I, I appreciate you because you just came over and was like, hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very outgoing. <laughs> And I love it. I love it. So please tell us a little bit about you. And, and for for guys who, if you don't know, she goes by Blue. Okay. Yeah, I go by Blue. So, um, hi, I'm Blue, like she said. Um, I am, we'll start off with kind of like the basics. So a little bit about me. I am 23. I'm from Arizona. I am Haitian from Port-au-Prince. Um, I am queer <laughs> and yeah, I'm going to school right now to get a degree in nutrition. So that's kind of where we're at right now. So yes. And she's going to be my nutritionist because I have the worst nutrition <laughs> known to man. And it's not because I eat terribly. It's mm -hmm. because I don't eat enough. <laughs> I don't eat enough. So yeah. And, and that's one of the things that, um, connected me to you because I was like, what the heck? Yes. I need somebody who's going to keep me on my P's and Q's. Can, you know, who's going to keep, hold me accountable on me. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and you, and, and, and not just, and you do that and, and you don't even, I, I don't tell you this, um, but I'm like, if she could go to the gym and she could lift all those weights, I could walk around this block. I just <laughs> Get yourself up and just go ahead. Um, so I thank you because it's just those kind of motivations that um, help me. And I know we're, you know, I, I think I'm significantly a little bit older than you. <laughs> I won't say that much. <laughs> you know, I don't care. I don't, you know, my age, I don't, I don't. I, it's okay. We're good friends. It's, it's, it is what it is. Um, but I love that about you. So registered dietitian. Okay. Um How's that going for you? It's honestly, it's been a really interesting journey, just like kind of studying that and getting into that. I'll, I'll share a little bit like the story of how I got into nutrition yeah. or wanted to kind of pursue fitness in that field. So mm -hmm. for me, um, I wasn't really phys physically active growing up. I, I don't know. I just didn't do much. I was homeschooled and not saying that homeschool people aren't physically active, but just for no, me. no, it's just yeah, different. Just, just for me personally, I wasn't physically active, and so I was like, you know, I kind of want to change this. I want to invest more in my health and like take better care of myself. And right. So in twenty about tw end of twenty nineteen, I got a job at a YMCA, and I was just one of like just regular like summer camp counselors there, and I was like, okay, this is kind of cool, and. I kind of like after that summer ended, I kind of segregated into working at the front desk and then I started working into the, the gym mm -hmm. and the head coach there, we're, we're still good friends to this day. She kind of introduced me to cardio and then how to like do it at a good, healthy, healthy pace and do it okay. at the burning zone and stuff like that. Like really, really good, like hands-on learning. And I was like, this, this is really fascinating. And so she kind of transitioned me over to lifting weights and I was like, okay, this is cool. And like, this feels more, this is what my body enjoys doing. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I started like lifting weights and then I became kind of like a fitness instructor there for a little bit. And then with like quarantine and all the gyms being shut down and everything, I kind of like started making you start making like videos and made created like a whole fitness Instagram yeah. And so I was like, this is kind of cool. I'm going to post my content and it's not for anyone else. It's just kind of like for me to keep progress. So kind of like a little journal and it started growing and stuff. And we were like, this is cool. Like I see you and stuff. And I was like, okay, this, I could probably turn this into like a career. Yeah. And yeah. And so that happened created the Instagram and everything. And then I was like, okay, let let me see where this goes. And then I was introduced to NASM. I'm still in the process of working on that right now because mm -hmm. we offer a whole bunch of like different different programs and stuff like that you can work on to build up your credentials and stuff. So 
yeah, that's kind of what happened. And I got into powerlifting and that's, that's kind of where I'm at now. I want to prepare for competitions. My best, um, my best area is probably squat right now. I'm standing on a 380 squat right now. Stop it. Oh, so, yeah, that's kind of... Oh, no way. Yeah, that's that was the heaviest I've ever done was 380. So I, I kind of took a break from that because it's really hard on your joints. Yeah. My low, lower, yeah, my lower vertebrae was kind of hurting a little bit. And so I was yeah. like, I think I'm not training correctly. I'll just go back to back heavy every day. And so yeah. I start, I do more strength training now. Okay. So yeah, I want to be a strength strength and conditioning coach that kind of where that's where I want to like gear more towards. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, listen, if you need somebody to practice, I'm here for you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Cause you know what? It's funny. You said you say that about doing the, the, the squats. Um, so I didn't know. I, I was on set two, 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 two or three days ago, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have a stunt coordinator because we really weren't supposed to be doing stunts. But oh, in this scene, I get hit in the head, but I don't get hit. So I have to simulate. Yeah. I'm getting hit and, and go down. Yeah, yeah. I can't tell you. I, I must have squatted like 50 times. Okay. Oh, so you had to get yeah. down to the point my, my I, I think it was my right leg. Oh, my gosh. It's just starting to like get its momentum back. I built up so much lactic acid in just uh -huh. doing that, that the, <laughs> the director was like, I don't want you on the floor. I say, this is the safest place for me right now. Oh my <laughs> because goodness. because I, it, it had no stability to hold me uh -huh. up from just yeah. me working it. Because I've been walking, I really haven't been doing the, the, the strength training that I, I typically would have been doing because I, yeah. I don't I just kind of just been getting up and stretching and then going to walk. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you say that and listening to your body and body mechanics really play a big part in yes. that. Yeah. I did CrossFit. I did those jerk lifts and it's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. And like, I, I, okay. So I took a little bit of CrossFit. I did it for about four months I kind of got into that, but just the heavy heaviness of it and just, it was just too intense for my joints and for my body personally. I admire a lot of people who can do it, but just for me, I was just like this, this isn't exactly what I prefer to do. So I was mm -hmm. like, I'm, I'm going to take a break from doing this and kind of more focus on strength training because I just put on muscle naturally. That's just me. I've always had like a bigger frame and stuff. And so I was mm -hmm. like, this is, this is kind of what I want to do more of. So, no, that's good. And it, and it looks amazing on you. I mean, I'm telling you guys, if you're not following her, you, you really should start because she is, I, I, she's a beast in, in there. When she's in there, she's in her zone and you can tell it. It's like, even though I am not there, I can see it. I can mm -hmm. feel the energy that is just, you know, you're there and you're, you're present for yourself. And, and that's, that's key. It's really showing up for you and you yeah. show up for you. Yeah. You, you show up for you. How, how mm -hmm. is that showing up for you? Cause I, something tells me you haven't always shown up for you. So yeah, that's, that's kind of where it started um, showing up for myself and being like, okay, this is this going in the gym feels good. And there's also my confidence is boosting too. And I feel like that's kind of, where life kind of like started to take a big turn because like I I was always like kind of I was kind of like the quiet I wasn't I didn't have a lot of friends growing up I was kind of more reserved and I just didn't do much growing up and so I was kind of like I, know, I was kind of like in the background and stuff and when I started weightlifting it taught me to it's okay to stand out it's okay to look big it's okay to take up room mm -hmm. and also being comfortable with my body going through changes. And I feel like that's what I'm going through right now in life is figuring out what works for me and how to show up more like myself. Okay. And if that means like um, 
changing direction sometimes in life and being like, okay, this, this one, this one idea that I had in life, isn't going to work out. So I'm going to try something else. And right. that's, that's why I feel like God really comes into play for my life mm-hmm. too, because he plays a big factor in it too, with being queer too. I was like, okay, like, how do I show up as myself in the gym and outside of the gym in my private life and stuff? And yeah, that that's a that's it was just it was just a long journey, but yeah. Yeah. But you know, and and again, this is this is the show where I, I'm always asking about that authentic part of you. Mm-hmm. How is it that you're showing up for yourself authentically in the presence of many different people? Let's just start with religion. Showing up and in the church showing up in, you know, events, church events. I mean, I know you still are in those, in the circle of things. Mm -hmm. So how is that? Um, that's a really good question, Diana. Um, I think for right now, for me, how I show up authentically myself in church settings and in my, in my life in general, um, especially with church, I started wearing, being, I, I feel more comfortable and kind of like in men's clothing. That's just mm-hmm. me. I'm more of just, I don't believe that clothes have a uh, gen- specific. No. I'm like, they're clothes. They're, they're clothes. It's a shirt. It's cotton. Like, <laughs> it's so feel comfortable. I'm going to wear it. Exactly. That's, that's, that I kind of really had to force myself to be like, okay, how do I feel comfortable in a church setting if a dress I'm not? comfortable with all the time. Like I still wear dresses sometimes. So I was like, I kind of want to dress more masculine and feminine sometimes. And mm-hmm. I think also wanting to do the big chop and change my hair. Cause I had, I had longer hair too. And being like, this is okay. If people in my church setting and finding belonging in that and dressing more masculine at church it was hard for me at first, but I just kind of like did the big chop and just kind of showed up and people were, I'm like, take it or leave it. Like, I, I, I don't really care. Like this is, me. This is what I feel comfortable showing up as to worship. Cause that's, I'm here for God, not here for other people. Right. So, yeah. And I feel like that's where we get a lot of judgment and just people get the wrong idea when it comes to church and religion. Like you're there to worship God. You're not there for other people and your glory goes to God. So mm. why you're, that's why you're there. You're not there for other people's approval and praise at the end of the day, because then you're there for the wrong reason. And okay. that's where I was like, okay, like if I show up in a men's button up and black pants and like nice clean men's shoes, it doesn't matter as long as I'm there in the building and worshiping God. So that's kind of where my confidence comes from. You know, and, and that's, it's beautiful you say that because I think that's a struggle many people have, especially wanting to continue that worship and that closeness with God and mm-hmm. continue where they grew up. I mean, everybody wants to don't want to leave their home church. Yeah. You know, so it's like, how do I how do you show up and be present and just it's just showing up and seeing who is really there for you? Exactly. Yeah. Because if you show up for you as you, those who are true to you will show their face. Yeah. You know, I have a a sticker on my computer that says your vibe attracts your tribe. Mm hmm. That's a real. Yeah, that's that's very true. I I definitely had to do a lot of that growing up. Like I always kind of felt like. I was kind of different than everyone else because I also grew up in a very white um, area too. Mm -hmm. And because I'm from Arizona and being, and I kind of like stood out being like a little black girl in a white, (laughs) white part of town or white area. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where I had to learn to, it's okay to take up room. It's okay to be different and everyone else there's mm-hmm. there's beauty in difference and some of the most amazing people were different yeah so, 
Yeah. I exactly, exactly. And you know, it's just it's hard when you are growing up and you have to wear so many masks. And I say yeah. this all the time, you know, on the show different times because we wear so many masks depending on where we are. And exactly. Um I know personally I get tired of putting on this mask and oh I'm in this app, I gotta put this mask on. Oh, I gotta do this. And yeah. it got to the point where I said, okay, this is enough. I the, the, first of all, these masks are heavy. <laughs> yeah. You get tired of it. Yeah. I don't I don't know which persona I was in. When did you last meet me? Where was I? I I don't have time for it. Yeah. So you know, now I just show up as me. And it, it, this this is who I am. Some days I am loud, and that's okay. Yeah. Some, some days I am very quiet and reserved, and you're wondering what the hell I'm thinking about, and that's okay. But it's it's all part of me, and I and that's what I love that you show up for you as you. Okay. So so that that's beautiful in itself. So you started consider the lily, this lily out of this. Yeah. Um, so th the story behind the podcast is really interesting. I was actually in church when the idea kind of like popped in my mind. It was kind of like a, hmm, maybe I should like start like a queer, like black hosted um, LDS because I'm part of the Mormon faith. We go by the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Friday Christ. Saints. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, that's that's the church I belong to. And I think that's where I was like, because there's not like I don't I didn't I didn't grow up with a lot of um, black role models to really look right. up to in my church. Like I didn't I, I just didn't know a lot. And so I was like, there's not a lot of like queer voices of people of color in my church, I feel like. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, why do I like start a podcast with a black queer host and I can invite more like people of color mm -hmm. onto there. And that's kind of like where I got the idea of the podcast. Cause I was like, I feel like we as humans get inspiration, but, and we want change, but we're so afraid to be the change ourselves. Yes. Or create that ripple effect and let other people notice our ripple and join in. Yeah. So it's kind of like a domino effect. And I was like, okay, so I'm, I'm just going to start it. And I started, and I used like Canva for the, a lot of the, the behind the scenes work and stuff. And that's, yeah, I just posted my story, my intro of how it started. And yeah, now we're a month later and we have like 10 people on there. Yay. Yay. So, yeah. I'm going to be starting season two in a couple of months. Just kind of taking kind of like a breather right now. So. Yeah. You take a breather, step back, revamp, see what's out there, see what you can do, see what you can change, what you pick up from other pod podcasts and, you know, other things yeah. that you see out there. Um, I revamp all the time. Um, yeah. Like now I'm on the TV, WBI, Ubiquity Radio and TV. So mm -hmm. that is the first thing, the newest thing for the new year this year that I have started. So yeah, so once you decide where you want to go, you know, maybe we can get you on the international station and you can join in and be, cool. be a part, be a part yeah, of it. I'm, you know? I'm looking for more queer Black voices. So yeah, um, yeah, there's, there's not a lot that I know, like, there's definitely a lot of like queer Black people, but like, from a Christian viewpoint, it's 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 kind of like kind of like a unicorn a little bit. It's kind of hard to find some. It is. So here's you mentioned that, and I have a really good friend of mine who is like my 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 spiritual. They're non-binary, so I, I can't say sister, brother, you know, whatever. Yeah, but yeah. that that's my person that is in mm -hmm. my in my life and they are actually um really deep into the church they just became a chaplain wow. um and they are uh, a armor guard armor bearer hmm, 
I always get that all messed up. I'm so sorry, Chris. I apologize if I messed that up. Um, but uh, they are deep in 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 religion and definitely in identify as lesbian, but uh, is in a queer family. And you know what? And they are unapologetically who they are. Exactly. That's unapologetically cool. who they are so i can definitely connect you with them and then you know even though they're not in this state it's still nice to reach out and stretch out to see and that and they, there are other black queer individuals who are in religion and, um i had another young lady who is a pastor who was also on the podcast um I think back in season two, oh my gosh, I, this is like season six. Can you, I can't even believe this. Um, I've been doing this for three years. So she she was on, um, yeah, I think it was season two. Yeah. But they were on. And then there's, so I I, I do know, I, now that you say that, it, it gets my wheels turned. I'm like, wow, I do know quite a few. Yeah. Um, queer there's a lot. It's just... in, in religion, but. They are out there and they are so authentically themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's definitely, I feel like there's a lot out there. They're just working on being comfortable with using their voice. And that's a hard point to get to. Like, I'm finally at that point now myself. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's been a long journey coming to that point. I'm like, okay, this is me and I'm going to show up as me. And if you don't like it, then... That's a you problem, <laughs> not me. So, yeah, yep. yeah, that is, is totally a them problem. So, okay, so you're registered. You go in school for registered dietitian. What else is on the list for Miss Blue? Um, I think I think that's about it. Honestly, just oh, no, that's not it. That's never it. Just right now, that's where the direction of my life right now. Podcasting, okay. schooling, and yeah. I I think that's where I'm at right now, trying to like navigate um career careerize what I want to exactly see myself in the next year, the end of this year. I've been kind of thinking about that. Like mm -hmm. I I think it's I don't, I don't know, like I feel like that's kind of like a day by day kind of thing, but there's okay. a lot that there's a lot that I'm trying to like figure out. But yeah, that's <laughs> yes, I don't know. There's not there's not much more. Yeah, you, you know what? There is so much more, you know, within ourselves. And I mean, like you said, you're 23, so you're just learning you, mm -hmm. you know, and you're in a beautiful spot where. You can just kind of navigate it and see where where the wind takes you, you know. And I think that's the beauty of it. And honestly, at twenty three, I had two kids at twenty three, trying to navigate, you know, being a mom and getting deciding on a career, leaving the military. So now at this age, now I'm learning who who I am. Yeah. Right. So I, I always try to encourage all individuals, young, old, whatever, there is no age limit. When you get to a point where you're at that evolution of self, mm -hmm. you have to take the time to get to know you mm -hmm. because at each stage, you're a different person. Absolutely. Yeah. You're not the same person you were at 18. Mm hmm. And when you turn 30, you're not going to be the same person you are at 23. Exactly. Yeah. You know, right. so you, you always have to do that, that self evaluation or as the, the nurse in me say, the uh, assessment, <laughs> you have to assess you and see where you are at that moment. So this is where you are right now. Registered dietitian, you're working out, keeping yourself fit. And, and doing that, building your strength training, do you plan on being a personal trainer at some point? Yes, that's what I'm working on towards right now is becoming a certified personal trainer. Mm -hmm. And because like the different um, certifications I had were only through local gyms. 
and I couldn't use like that certification outside of that gym. So I want to get one that's more. And the nice thing about NASM too, it's not just for in the U.S. It's for out outside. Nice. Yeah, it's a traveling certification. So the global one. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's I want to reach beyond just the U.S and see where my career kind of takes me. I'm really optimistic about that. And just there's, but I really want to focus on, I think right now is I really want to focus on like doing humanitarian work too. Cause I feel oh. like that's, I'm, I'm a, um, I'm a nurturer by mm -hmm. heart. I'm just a very like giving and caring person mm -hmm. and being from Port-au-Prince Haiti and being adopted from there kind of like and everything that's going on in Port Prince Haiti has kind of like shook something inside me I'm like there are so many so many of my people that are hurting right now what can I do else in in the little spot that I am right now and I was like there's so much that I can do and so many just using my voice and creating platforms where people who are struggling or hurting and need a space to talk I feel like that's causing a ripple effect too. And nice. well, I, don't, I don't know what's going to happen from there. So you ever, you ever think about the Peace Corps, joining the Peace Corps? I've, I've never really like thought about that, to be honest, but I looked into it, but I never really like, was like, huh, that was more of like a side, like on the back burner thought. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a thought. It gets you out there to help uh, others, especially out in Haiti during this time. Mm -hmm. um, and it gets you to use that that nurturing piece of you in a semi-safe environment. I mean, they try to make you keep you as safe as possible um, during those times. So um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a thought. It's a yeah. thought. I, I always said once upon a time when, you know, if my life was in a different place, I would yeah. have done Doctors Without Borders. Oh, I've, I've heard amazing things about them. Or just like, I, yeah. Or, yeah, or Nurses Without Borders, since I'm a nurse practitioner. Um, I, I, I often consider doing that, and, you know, I just, um, but uh, um, I'm going to say I'm a little bit pampered, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I wasn't ready to, to like, leave the comforts. Um, that I have because you have to be ready to do that. I mean, because you're going in some really desolate areas where they're not going to have running water. They're not going to have, you know, vaccines and all these things at hand. So you really have to put yourself in that mindset to be ready to tackle that. And um, I mean, I've done it. I've been in the mm -hmm. army. I mean, it's not like I, I can't do it. It's yeah. just, you know, one of it those really things. It really stresses you. Yeah. It really, it, it does stress you. And you, you have to be in a different mindset as far mm -hmm. as um, you, you're, I, I'm, I'm very much an empath. So I would want to take everyone home with me and, and, mm -hmm. and care for them. And, you know, and I, I knew for me, uh, I, I joke about saying that I'm pampered. It has nothing to do with me being pampered. I, I mean, to care less. Um, More about it. Yeah. I get I, I get what you mean now. Yeah. yeah. It's just the fact that I care so much and I and I, I don't like to see people go without. And so yeah. um for that reason is really the reason why I just really don't do it because it even working in the hospitals that I, you know, taking care of people, it takes so much out of me. It's just, it's just a lot. And I care. Even my students. Oh my gosh. I'll sit there and ball my eyes out with you. <laughs> it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's really sad. It, it, it's not sad in, in that way. It's, it's, it shows that I care, but when I'm supposed to be like this, you know, this instructor that's teaching you how to be a nurse, I can't sit here and be crying with you. Like, I know it's okay. We can get through this. We just yeah. 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 I, yeah. I get that. I get that. You know, and, and and it's not always. It's definitely something that I've I've had better control over. But you know, it's one of those things that you just you think about you, again, knowing yourself and doing a self assessment, right? Yeah. So your journey. You said you were single. I know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah I think 
Uh, yeah, I'm. I, I've, I've been I've been single for a while, to be honest. I've been yeah, I've been single for a while. I I've kind of like got when I first like um became single was really hard, and navigating that and being like, okay, like do I do I get into another relationship because I'm lonely, mm-hmm. or do I or am I just seeking actual companionship? And I think that's where I had to really like take a step and sit with myself and be like, okay, like let's go through a season of just being single and getting to know different people and date and stuff. And that's where I learned a lot about myself as an individual. And yeah. And I've gotten to the point now where like I've gone through so many messy periods of I, I've built like a pretty good like community of friends and people and stuff. And I don't, I feel like you can find companionship and friends and out in community too. You don't mm-hmm. need to just have a, like a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a person. Yeah. Date. Yeah. You can find that outside of relationship. And I feel like with a lot of people, like they feel like they need to be in a relationship to feel a part of themselves or feel like they feel seen. Mm-hmm. And that's where my heart kind of breaks for a lot of people, like, especially with my age too, like we're so quick to settle for something or someone that doesn't deserve us just so we can be, say we're in a relationship or mm-hmm. not to feel alone. Because I feel like that's where a lot of like problems occur and where a lot of unhealthy relationships happen because we just settle. Mm -hmm. And I was someone who was, I wasn't into like, I wasn't in like a bad relationship, but I was in, we were, I was dating someone that just wasn't for me. And I just kind of settled with it. And I was like, okay, this is cool. But she's giving me the attention I, I want and I crave and stuff. But I was like, this Mm -hmm. is like attention. And so I'm going to like broke it off. So yeah, now I'm single and I'm loving it. And (laughs) Yeah, like I, I, I honestly, I, I love being single right now, and I you got this whole glow about you. I don't think yeah. you realize it's yeah. like I'm like I'm I'm okay with being single, and it's cool. Like I'm not gonna like force myself to go be in a relationship or look for someone. Like if someone comes my direction, and they, I've learned to be very picky about what I will tolerate and what I won't tolerate too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot, and a lot of my age aren't to that point to know what they want in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I've kind of like learned with my season of isolation kind of. So I'm like, I'm not in any rush, but I would love to be in a relationship, but I'm not rushing to be in a relationship. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. You're 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 in a relationship with you. Yeah, right now. with God right now. So you, that's, yeah. yeah, I have a, a really good friend, my my, my sister in, in in um in life here. She says all the time because you know people always trying to set her up with somebody, and she's like, "I'm in a relationship. It's me, God, and Jesus. We we're, we're all together. We're." That's that that's that's my people. That's that's who I'm with. Um so that's so funny. But yeah, you're in a relationship with you. You're in a relationship yeah. with you. You're 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 dating you, you're learning you, and yeah. then you know, you're you're putting yourself out there in, in different situations where you can meet new people. And as I said, your vibe is gonna attract that tribe of yours. Exactly. It's gonna attract that person that is meant to be there with you and share in that and, you know, go through that growth with you because you want someone that's going to grow with you. Nobody yeah. And, and that's where like, I feel like a lot of relationships start to kind of like fall apart. Cause we have an idea of right when we get into a relationship, we're like, this is cool. Like this is all sunshine and rainbows, but then two months down the line something serious happens or like you lose a job or someone gets deployed or someone's family gets sick or someone has to move far away. And that's where you really stretch your relationship. But people are so quick to get in relationships because they just want companionship, but don't want the real 
and the moments that come with a relationship. Like, are yeah. you going to stick with me through the thick and thin? Are you going to grow with me as a person? Like, mm -hmm. what if we have to spend like a year apart, two years apart? What if we have to break up and then decide to get back together? Like, what if like just just so many different things? And I'm like, are you willing to comfort to compromise on a little bit of uncomfort to find comfort with me later? You know? Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I totally understand what you're saying. Um, you got to be ready to be in those uncomfortable situations together. And and that's when you really see the true nature of an individual is when you're in yeah. those uncomfortable situations. Right. And it's that that age old thing that we say about marriage it, it mm -hmm. In any relationship, not just marriage, but a relationship in itself, that'd be real intimate relationships. And your friendships are intimate relationships, people. Okay. I don't care what anyone says. Your friendships are intimate relationships. Okay. Yeah. Um, intimacy is not just about sexual sex and, and all that. It's, it's, yes, you allow in your space. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Cause I feel like you live in a very like, sex focused society like yes people get into relationships because they want sex and people go through certain like i i've gone through that myself like i've gone through moments mm -hmm. where i just use people and i regret it yeah it was like i just saw this person for just in a moment of like just short term gratification instead yes. of a beautiful soul and an individual that is is experiencing a human reaction and i just mm -hmm. used them and just put them to the side like that like they didn't matter and i never want to have someone feel like that again and that's mm -hmm. that's where i kind of like promised to myself and to god i was like let me never be that person again where I hurt someone deeply like that because I've been hurt like that. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't ever want to be that person. And it just felt really horrible. Like now that I think back at it, I'm like that. I hurt a lot of people doing that. And that's where like therapy comes into play and just a lot of like, just take, just go through a moment of being single being mm -hmm. in solitude i feel like that's where you learn a lot about yourself and it's okay it's going to be uncomfortable because sitting with yourself is uncomfortable yeah you you, you learned that like you just figured out there's some parts of you you really don't like that you did and you experience it's like oh yeah i really shouldn't have done that um yeah. <laughs> you know but that that shows growth within you you yeah. know and that just makes you that much of a better person when it comes to um, your next relationship, you, you, you'll you be ready. Now, that person is going to have to do some catching up to you if they're not ready, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people, especially your age, they're not ready for that. They're not, they're, they're not on that same wavelength. They probably mm -hmm. haven't experienced half of what you've experienced. And, and that's another piece. That's why you see, um, a lot of individuals who are with individuals who are older than they are because it's just just the way the trajectory of life takes them because they're at that mature level of then the people the peers of their age yeah. right so uh once upon a time when we used to judge individuals like oh they're with somebody that's like 10 years older 13 years old. It's like, no, but you, you have to think about not just the number, the mentality of the individual, both the individuals, both exactly. of them. Yeah. It, and then that's just where, one. Yeah. And that's, that's me too. Like one, one characteristic I find so attractive in um, a woman or some, or just because I'm gay. So like that, something that I find attractive or like look for a quality mm -hmm. in a person that I might consider me in a relationship is like, where are they at mentally? Like, I think a good mentality is so attractive and like mm -hmm. 
being able to, if there's a problem or something comes up and it takes a lot of mental strain, but they're able to stand, rise above it and be like, okay, this is what the mess looks like, but this, these are the pieces that we're going to go through to figure this out. So, yeah, it's that, that communication and being able to problem solve in the chaos. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's not easy to do. That's yeah, not easy to hard. do because it's, 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 it's you got pieces everywhere. It's chaotic. And to, to be able to take a step away and breathe and say, okay, this is what I can control. And this is what I can't control. Let me use my energy on what I can control. Because what I can't control, hey, I can't do diddly squat about it. So why am I going to waste the energy worried about it? But this, I can, I can handle this. I can, I can deal with this. So let's fix this. And then we'll figure that piece out later. So those, those are, those are great pieces. And, and sometimes you learn that through therapy. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with therapy, people. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and I, the, we have to take away that stigma, especially in the black and brown community, that stigma behind therapy. I have a therapist, love her dearly, okay? I see her every, what, twice, three times a week, a month, excuse me. Um, I'm like, you okay? <laughs> I know, right? I have to worry, like, wait, no, no, I'm okay. I really am okay. No, it's just weeks, three three weeks, every three weeks or so. And I, I actually take a, I took a break from seeing her actually. So I hadn't seen her for a few months. And then I was like, you know what, let me check in and just, yeah. you know, reconnect for a moment. And then, you know, and, and that's what happens. You know, you find somebody that works for you and you don't have to go to therapy every week, every two weeks, every three weeks. You may go for two months, three months and be like, okay, I'm, I'm good for now. And then next thing you know, Three months later, something happens and then you can check. Hey, 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 I got a call. Can we meet? <laughs> can we talk? <laughs> and, having a deep, and having good friends too that take the time to really listen to you. Like, like, I love keeping my circle small for that reason, because you don't know how people move, especially if we live in a very like self-centered mm -hmm. world. If people are just very like about themselves and they'll use people and so i feel like it's good to have a small circle in that way yeah like close small intimate circle but you can have a big circle of friends like i don't mind a friend but mm -hmm. i don't share my heart to heart with every friend you know right yeah and, the, and that's it you don't you don't share those heart to hearts with everybody because like like your your parents used to say uh, my parents used to say everybody ain't your friend exactly yeah <laughs> everybody's not your friend so <laughs> yeah. you, you can't do that so yeah so that you know that 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 is um that's great that you're sitting with you at this moment to learn you to be intimate with you yeah. so that when it, that person comes to play in your life you're both ready for each other whatever it may be you know, you know, how, however it will show up for you. And, you know, I kudos to you for, for recognizing that and, and being, being kind to yourself, right? Being mm -hmm. kind, got to be kind to you um, and doing that. So in this, uh, where, um, I had the question and I should have wrote it down and I got my notebook here and I did not write it down. Um, so please forgive me as I search my brain. Um, where is it that you are, you know, you're here, right? Mm -hmm. You travel, you, you, you're taking yourself out of your little, of this little circle that we've created for ourselves. How are you expanding you? I would say right now, I I just recently went to an LGBT conference up in Phoenix, and I met a lot of cool people up there. Um, there are a lot of like good allies there, and it's, it was called like the Gather Conference in. Okay. There's one coming up in um, Provo, Utah, pretty oh. soon. 
But yeah, I think just using my voice and going into spaces that are queer and also in different spaces, like going into um, church settings where I don't, I, I don't know. I'm still working on that. I, I'll have to come back to that question. But <laughs> yeah, I think right now just showing up and going to different conferences and stuff. I think that's pretty much where I'm at right now. Yeah. And just being, being yeah. present. Yeah. Right? And just being present. No, I think that's great. You know, I, I mean, it's it's all great things. And I, I love where you are. And I, I can't wait to continue to to just watch you just flourish and, and just go. Like I said, um, she is never going to ever get rid of me. That <laughs> 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 She's stuck with me, people. Um, uh, so you know, she's going to be my registered dietitian and um, she'll probably chastise me for everything that I don't want to eat um, <laughs> because I am a very picky eater. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm the same way. Horrible. Yeah. I, you know, I don't think anyone has been as picky as I have. I think my, my poor mother, um, <laughs> I don't know. I've sat at the table many nights by myself because I refuse to eat things. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. It's, it's a challenge. Um, so definitely, definitely I'm looking forward to that. So like I said, anytime you need to practice and, you know, throw things out there, just let me know. And also, as you are learning things, please do share, come back, share things and that you learn, especially about us as as who identify as women who are biologically women. And that's not to say anything about my transgender family, but, you know, being biologically a woman, we have other things that are happening, menopause and, you know, all the things and mm -hmm. same with being biologically men. So it's definitely really interesting to see what it is as you grow and learn to not um, to share with the community about what, what it is that we consume in yeah. our bodies and how we use it for energy growth ma maintenance of our skin hair nails all these these lovely things that we keep ourselves together with so it's definitely important for that and also for those who are also uh using hormones during their transition their diet and how that plays in the metabolizing mm -hmm. of food and and things like that so all those great things you are are going to learn. And I definitely would love to have you come back on and share that, share how you're growing, uh, you. growing educational wise, and also how you're beefing up because you're, I'm telling you, you guys have to go in there and watch her. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, it's, it's just, I'm, I'm like secretly fangirling over here as she's power lifting. <laughs> and I'm over here with my little 12 pound barbells. Like I'm going to get to 15s. I'm hey, gonna we all start somewhere. That's where I started. <laughs> so, uh, so yes, definitely cheer. You have your cheering squad over here. I am cheering you on. Okay. You. you go because you're, you're doing it and it's nothing to do, but to just show up for you. Um, you know, that you're not even trying, you're doing, you're doing it and just keep mm -hmm. doing it. And, you know, I'll, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'll be here cheering you in the corner. One day I might be out there with you, with my little, my little 12, 15, 20 pounds. I can get up to 20 pound weights. I, I, think, I, I think I was bench pressing. I got up to a hundred. Okay. So I was good. I was good. And then I fell off, but it's okay. It's okay. I, I muscles remember, right? Muscle yes. memory. My remember muscles you. remember. So um, definitely with that. So yeah. So what is anything you want to share with the audience before you bid us adieu? I don't think I have anything that comes to mind, but I just want to say thank you for inviting me on here and allowing me a space where I can share a little bit about myself and just share my story and some life advice that I've kind of learned along the way of my 23 years of living. So <laughs> thank you. 
Yes, you're welcome. And you've learned a lot in, in that time frame. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, you, you've you learned a great deal, especially again, like you say, you grew up in a, a, a white space and that's not being negative in any kind of way. Um, mm -hmm. But that's just where it is. And it's definitely you learning who you are culturally about where you come from and, you know, and, and being your authentic self and showing up as you. So again, okay. I applaud you for, for learning you. Thank you. Thank you very yes. much. Thank You're you for welcome. Me. Absolutely. Yay. Yes. I would definitely love you to come back. Um, especially, you know, tell us some more about how you're growing with Consider This Lily and, you know, let us know what else we can do to help you grow your podcast as well, because this is not, yeah. I'm definitely not one of these people that are out here who like to keep information to me. If anything that I can do to help you that to learn and grow, mm -hmm. let you take off. <laughs> yeah. I'll be here cheering you on. You know, that's just the, that's just the kind of person I am in. I am here to help see us all win however that may be. If you win faster than me, slower, than, it does not matter. We're here to support one another. So um, whatever it is that it, you need, I if I can't do it, I, I probably know somebody who can. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. You're okay. absolutely welcome because you're not alone. Yeah. All right. You're not alone. You found me. And with me comes my tribe. <laughs> And they can be a little cuckoo sometimes, but I love them. They're my tribe. <laughs> <laughs> we're full of energy and we're full of life. <laughs> hey, I love it. So definitely. So um, thank you. I'm going to put your information up one more time before we go. So if anyone is interested to follow Nancy or Miss Blue, pardon me. Wait a minute. Before I go, I I'm not even going to leave yet. How did we come to blue? That was my question. Ooh, how we came to blue? I think it's because, okay, so kind of like the story behind blue, um, I dated someone from the UK uh, and one of my favorite queer movies is the warmest, blue is the warmest color. Oh, that is a good movie. Yeah, it's a good movie. It's very, it's very sensual, but it's a very like good depiction of a queer relationship. Mm -hmm. Really good movie. And so there was like kind of like an inside joke between us. It's, it's personal, but there was like kind of like an inside joke. And she was like, you're kind of like the warmest color for me. And oh. I was like, why do I go by blue? And once we like ended things and everything, like it's that's just kind of like what stuck with me. And I was like, you know what? Blue. Like, you know what? Beyonce has her own stage name. Sasha Fierce. And right. All those other people, why can't I be blue? So, you know what? I love it. Very queer sounding, too. I like it. I like it. I Thank like you. it. Yes. No, no, I, 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 that's what I meant to ask you. And I was like, it just hit me. And I was like, okay, yeah, that's it. Um, so, yeah. So, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. And that is a good yeah. one. I, I remember seeing that movie um, in my beginning queer days of watching, binge watching all the queer movies that I can get my hands on. Mm -hmm. Everybody has that phase, right? Um, yeah. So thank you so much. I know, here I go. I, this is this is me. Okay, I am just like off on a tangent, get a thought, and there I go with it. But thank you so much again. And um, there we go. And Nancy yeah. is your name. But we we call her Blue, so we're gonna call her Blue, and you can reach her at her IG on considerthislily at gmail .com. All right, if you guys want to reach out, uh, it's on Spotify and Facebook and YouTube. Facebook and YouTube. So Spotify, I mean, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, but we're, we're we're gonna talk later this week because we're gonna get you fan out much further. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that that that's that's our goal. <laughs> We're gonna get her out there, guys. 
So please do share, please do uh, send her a message, say hi, whatever, find her on Instagram and just say hello and let her know you heard it here on the Soulful Eclectic. All right. Okay, so thank you. you're so very welcome. So I'm going to send you out for a minute and I'll see you in a minute. So guys, that is it and i want to say thank you so much for taking the time out to be with us as we talk to blue she is a beautiful soul and if you have not please go to consider this lily it's on spotify she would love to have you if you want to be a guest on her show reach out and um she can definitely have you on the show if you want to be a guest on my show you know where to find me the soulful eclectic.com or on facebook the soulful eclectic and on Instagram, the.soulfuleclectic.com. But until we meet again, I'm going to say take care of yourself and each other. Namaste. Mm -hmm.